The first quarterback breakdown in week nine is going to be Justin Fields. I just finished grading and making the rest of the video, so I already know what's in store. I think there's a lot of reason for hope with Justin Fields and Bears fans should be the happiest they've been in a long time about their quarterback. That said, I don't think it's great. I'm not sold. I'm not sold on Justin Fields as a prospect, and I don't think that this game was particularly special. All right, bear with me, because there's a lot of positive, but there's some negative too. Don't take my word for it, though. Let's look at the film. All right, so let's get started on Justin Fields. Drive one. Simple rollout, one read, first read, first receiver, routine throw. Now, this is a reminder that just because a throw is routine does not mean it's bad. It's expected. It's what he should do. It's what you want him to do. That right there is a little bit better than expected, right? It's a little bit further downfield. He has to put some serious zip on it to get it between the two defenders. It's not a great throw, but it's solid. It, you have to show something. Here's another example of a routine throw or a pedestrian throw, as my chart calls them. If your starting quarterback doesn't make this kind of throw most of the time, almost all the time, you're probably looking for another starting quarterback, or he's one of the best runners you've ever seen, ever. So, when I call throws pedestrian, that doesn't mean that they're bad. And it doesn't mean that the quarterback's done anything wrong. It just means that they're not particularly impressive. And everything can't be impressive, right? Like, most people aren't rich or poor. They're somewhere in the middle. Now, this play, check it out. We've got 11, or we got 10 people up on the line of scrimmage, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I counted wrong. Three, six, nine, ten. Okay. So then there are two safeties back here. This means it's very clearly going to be a two high man look. It's press man. These corners are tight. And the safeties are going to split the field. So one safety is going to take the right half and the other safety is going to take the left half. And they're going to go as deep as the deepest receiver. Right as soon as he sees this, Justin Fields has to be thinking, Oh, I'm going deep. And sure enough, that's what he does. So this is the right read. Now, he doesn't really use his eyes to hold the safety. This, this is why it's a bad throw. Like, I know that there's defensive pass interference, but it's also a bad throw. First of all, nice to see that Justin Fields already loves his new wide receiver one, Chase Claypool. But, so, you see how Justin Fields looks at the middle of the field for a moment here? I'll show you. Right here. He looks, he basically stares at this linebacker. I, I guess he could be selling that he's looking at this tight end here. But he pretty quickly gets back to his wide receiver one and throws the ball up pretty high. Now, the reason that I call this a bad throw is that even if Claypool was not interfered with and he had another step so this catch is more easy, this safety is right here to kill him. And if that safety kills him, he's probably not making the catch. The reason that safety is right there to kill him is partially because Javon Holland's a really good safety, but also partially because Justin Fields didn't look him off hard enough, and he didn't get the ball out quick enough. If you get the ball out quick enough, you throw the ball between the corner and the safety in what we call a pot shot. So if the ball lands like right here. Now, obviously, if you do that, you have to throw the ball when the receiver is like five yards downfield. Really tough to do, and it involves, or it requires, rather, really good play by your wide receiver. A better throw, and that's a catch. The defensive pass interference makes it so that it's the same result, and the Bears don't get punished for this. But that that is the explanation of why I'm going to grade that as a bad throw, despite the fact that there was a penalty, and despite the fact that it was almost catchable. All right, Fields going for the deep ball again, and that just, I don't think anybody will disagree with me. He just missed there. Like, he wants that back. He had an open man. He just put it too far out of his reach. Third and 10, does a really good job of stepping up through the pocket. And it's become clear in recent weeks that Justin Fields has been told, if your first read isn't there and it isn't easy for you to understand, just run. Because he's fast and he's really strong. He's He's a top three runner in the NFL from the quarterback position. I don't think that that's really debatable anymore. But I wish I had the All-22 for you guys. Sorry, it's not out. But you'll see 
his head moves one time. He looks at one guy, it's not there, and then he just runs. And that's fine. I'm going to grade that as a neutral run, because it's about as many yards as he would get if he had just thrown the check down to Dante Pettis right here. I'll also give him a, a plus pocket movement because he did extend the play, and that gives him an opportunity for downfield shots. Now, there wasn't a downfield shot to be taken, evidently, here. But it doesn't change the fact that if he keeps on doing that, eventually he'll get one. All right, so drive one, solid. Let's see about drive two. This bear's going to come out running it on first and second down. Tricky little quasi-quarterback sneak there. I like that. That's smart. The Bears' offensive play calling has been very creative, and I've been impressed. All right, here is a routine throw. And Fields hits it. It's pedestrian play. Chase Claypool, on the other hand, uh, not so good. <laughs> Gotta catch those. He would have had a lot of daylight. They, they really wanted to get the ball in Claypool's hands here, and he shows you exactly why. So that's another expected throw. It's pedestrian. There's nothing to it. And another. It's one thing to be thrown to your first read and short passes. It's another to be throwing three screens in a row. Make it four. Ooh, and that one is not a good throw. I understand he had a guy coming in his face, jumping. Uh, ooh, wording. I understand he had a man rushing in his face and jumping, and therefore he had to change his arm angle, so I give him a plus pocket movement. I give him another for that crazy spin move. See, this right here, this is... Okay. Let me finish the prior play. I gave him a plus move because there was a jumper coming in his face. Haha. -ha. And he had to put the ball a little higher because of it, but it was still a bad throw. There are ways to get that ball out to your wide receiver accurately so he does not have to jump and watch the ball sail above his head. Here... It's third and eight. You got a deep drop, so I'm assuming it's a deep developing route with this running back as your only safety valve. I can't see because I don't have the all 22, and trust me, it grinds my gears too. But I don't want to have to wait another 12 hours to get the all 22 from the NFL. I'd rather get this video out because 90% of the time you don't need all 22. Justin Fields does a really good job of making Jalen Phillips miss, and then does a really good job of making the other defensive end miss. And then he turns it upfield for a, a positive run. Okay, here we go. Here's some tight copy. Now, a more refined pocket passing quarterback has a clean pocket and an open receiver right here. He puts this ball where my mouse pointer is. That should be, if he throws it here, it's a good but not that difficult throw for a first down to your tight end. Fields is not yet that kind of processor. He is not yet that kind of pocket passer. And that's why, to this point in his career, he's been mostly bad. However, one thing you cannot deny about Justin Fields is this escapability. First, he makes Jal Jalen Phillips is a really good defensive end. He makes him miss. Bradley Chubb's an okay defensive end. He sees him coming, and he just stops and runs away. And then he turns up field, and he's probably about as good a runner as any of his wide receivers. So this is a plus run. It gets graded the same. It's, it's just as effective for my grading algorithm as if you were to have thrown that ball, like I said earlier. So the Bears are doing a really good job so far and in recent weeks of simplifying the game for Justin Fields and leaning on his legs because his processing, his processing as a passer, his mental processing is still not good. But it can grow, theoretically. It's, you know, it's, it's theoretically easier to understand the game better than it is easier to grow an accurate or strong arm, right? So what they're doing is saying, run the ball, use your athleticism. If the first read's not there, don't worry about it, just run. And if you do that for a year, by the time defenses catches up, catch up and the gimmick wears off, and it will, you'll have had time to develop the rest of your game, and then maybe you can be a true quarterback. See, right here, this is a lot of Mitch Trubisky stuff. That is a is a power rollout, sprint out even, with a very pedestrian throw attached to the first receiver. 
Jalen Phillips is going to be seeing Justin Fields in his nightmares because this should be like three sacks for him already. But great escapability. That's another plus pocket move. And then a solid throw. Again, first read, not particularly covered. I don't know. Do you think you can make that throw? I, I think you probably could. Now, you probably couldn't make it while running as fast as Justin Fields was running, and that's why he gets the plus pocket movement for it. But the throw itself, pretty easy. The, the processing that it took for him to get there mentally, pretty easy. The Bears are doing a really good job of simplifying things for Fields, and he's doing a really good job of being an awesome athlete and not fucking it up for them. So here the Bears aren't even pretending that there's anything going on. It's just a run. And that's a positive run. Again, same as a good throw. You got 10 yards. It's a first down. It's all you want. All right, third and five. It's a heavy box. Wow, I'm a little surprised that they're playing so heavy. Fields steps up in the pocket. Really good job of not being afraid of the pressure. There are a lot of quarterbacks who see this pocket when they're about to let it. Like, this is the beginning of his release. There are a lot of quarterbacks in this pocket who cower or just pull out and run. Good job to be steady. However, that's not a great decision and not a great throw. Let's see if there's anything else going on. Yeah, so these little these guys are running kind of like a rub cross. So 11, Darnell Mooney is going to come down like this. 24, Herbert is going to come over like this. And the idea is that they they create a natural pick from one of these defenders on them, and one of them like falls down, and it's an easy throw. Uh, that doesn't seem to be happening. They're not open. There's defensive linemen and a linebacker spying that would bat that ball down if he threw it. Uh, I can't really see here. It looks like Cole Komet might have had inside leverage if he had thrown sort of a, a seam fade here. That probably would have been his best decision, but it doesn't look like he had any great options. <laughs> Ironically, running might have been his best bet there. Instead, it's a bad throw with a plus move. Bears get a punt blocked, and I guess I don't even have to stop the video. Let's just uh, forward on. Yeah, so drive three and four are going to be the same long clip, an extended cut. All right, play action, roll out, good job to swivel his hips. However, still just a pedestrian throw. And again, pedestrian throw means expected. It means what the play called for. It's good, or not good, but it's like, it's not bad. Here, again, bears no pretenses. Justin Fields is our best athlete, and he's going to run the ball, and it's another positive run. And another positive run. And when I say positive, I don't mean that it gained yards. I mean a positive run is... So there are positive, neutral, and negative runs. There are negative runs like it's 4th and 20 and your quarterback decides to run it for 5 yards. That's a bad play, right? Or let's say your quarterback pulls it on an RPO and loses yardage. But if he had just given it to the running back, it would have been 10 yards. Alright, here's another pedestrian throw. Open, quick, simple, first read. That is an example of a neutral run. It is a quarterback, almost all quarterback sneaks that are successful are neutral, right? Like, you should get one yard on a quarterback sneak, always. So the fact that you get a yard or two doesn't impress me. It's, it's normal. If you didn't, I'd be upset, right? So a positive run is not only a run that gets yards, but a run that basically matches what a good throw would have gotten you in yardage. That was another routine throw. So you'll notice that the Bears are doing a lot of simple things and keeping it really easy on Justin Fields. And I actually love this idea because my prescription, I didn't love Justin Fields coming out of college. In fact, I said that his processing was some of the worst I've ever seen. But I said that this guy's so physically talented that if you could just run the ball with him like Lamar Jackson does in Greg Roman's Baltimore offense and give him a year or two to try to figure out the league while you work on gimmicks, oof. This is exactly it. If you try to give him two years of just running in gimmicks to figure out the rest of the league, to let his mental game grow, you could theoretically get a quarterback who has adequate or possibly even better mental traits because of his experience mixed with a quarterback who's an amazing runner and who can do this sometimes. 
the elite ball. You couldn't have placed that better. If he tries to lead him and drop it in the bucket, it's actually a slightly harder catch, and he might run out of room. This is the ball needs to be right there. Boom, it's it's perfect. It's an elite throw. Yeah, good job by Mooney. But that's what Mooney has. Like that's that's the play as a wide receiver. So this is a 17 yard downfield plus about eight yards in the end zone. It's like a 25 yard throw on a dot in the end zone. Call that elite. All right, drive four. Again, a lot of uh, training wheel plays. But the reason they got in the end zone is because Justin Fields did something special. All right, so the start of the second half, the Bears are down, but they're not out. Another play, they love that play action flat to the left. And every time it's going to be a pedestrian throw if Fields hits it. But he's doing what he's being told to. Right, so a pedestrian throw is neither positive nor negative. It's just neutral. Here, that's a good pocket. Okay, this play. <laughs> All right, stepping up there, that's a positive movement. He, he buys himself time by stepping up in the pocket. Here, this little fake throw completely freezes Christian Wilkins. And honestly, if Fields wasn't so good of a runner, this would be the smart play to throw it out here to uh, Clay Watts' face. Claypool. Then to start running like this is a positive run. But to keep going and turn this into a touchdown is an elite run. Look at this man go. This is a special play. Like As a runner, this is unheard of shit. Right here, he should get like four yards. But his pump fake turns it into at least ten yards. And his speed alone turns it into a touchdown. Once he breaks that ten-yard threshold... There's nobody who can get him. Baker should have had him, but for the pump fake. Probably should have had him there. 45 should have tackled him, but Justin Fields was just too fast. Broke his angle. Not ankle with a K, but angle with a G. And that's just, you're never going to get an easier pass than that, so that's a pedestrian pass. But Justin Fields, elite play to get the touchdown. This is, this is, if you're a Bears fan... You've never had more to be encouraged about with Justin Fields. One, two. One, two. All right, simple drop back, positive movement to stay or step up through the pocket, but there's a flag. Yeah, I was going to say, I saw a pretty significant hold back there. So we're just not going to grade the play. I, I don't know what would have happened if there wasn't a, a play-defining hold, and so I'm just going to pretend I didn't see anything. That's a bad throw. It could have been a little higher, could have been a little earlier. Justin Fields has a problem with throwing the ball a little too late. It's part of his processing issues. Here we get a plus pocket movement for the escape and another one to get the ball off, so it's a positive throw away. And we live to see drive seven. All right, little ride and decide RPO looks like. Oh boy. Okay, so first of all, I was wrong. This is clearly not an RPO. These these linemen never get downfield. <laughs> this is just straight play action with a mass protect. I guess the idea is to block, 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 and then release into the flat for a yards after the catch opportunity. Uh, you can see Justin Fields is staring at this running back. That is where he wants to go, what he thinks he should be doing. It, it's not there, so he resets. There's a plus pocket movement. But he makes a terrible decision. He's late on that throw, and that is a pickable ball. Holding on the offense because there's no way that he has that much time otherwise. Holding on the defense. Oh, no. Yeah, that sucks. All right, so there's the hold on the offense. Yeah, I was going to say Jalen Phillips, that should be sack four. Let's see the holding on the defense, see if we can grade this play or not. We can grade that play. I'm sorry. Okay, this is a hold. It's ticky-tack, but it is a hold. 
It's very, very weak, <laughs> but it's a hold. However, it has nothing to do with the play because here is when Justin Fields sets and starts to think about throwing. So that's still a pickable ball. Justin Fields fucked up there and he got lucky. This is the problem. When Justin Fields is asked to do straight drop back stuff and process the, what he's seeing as a passer rather than a runner, it's still not there. He's still a full second late. The Bears are just doing a really good job of tailoring their offense to what they have at quarterback, plus or a neutral run. They're doing a really good job of tailoring what they have, or what they call on offense to what they have on, at quarterback. Same bad throw. Plus movement, because he had a guy in his face, but bad throw. I don't think anybody would argue with that. It's a routine throw. It's a five-yard curl. I'm trying not to use the word pedestrian, because apparently it really upsets people on YouTube. Uh, it just means neutral to me. That's a positive run. It's a routine throw. He did freeze Jalen Phillips with his eyes, so I'll give him a plus pocket movement here. Like, that's really good. That's a positive manipulation of the pocket and or the ball in the pocket that made this throw more possible. Another unabashed run and another positive outcome. It's a good run. He's a special runner. And the Dolphins aren't special at stopping quarterback runs, but hey, he makes the play, man. Uh, I, I know that it's a touchdown, but this is a wide open tight end on a flat four yards downfield. It's pedestrian. It's routine. If your quarterback doesn't hit that, you're like, fuck. If Josh Allen misses that throw, you're, like, incensed. You throw your controller across the room because Madden's clearly broken, right? That is the definition of a pedestrian throw. All right. Bears have kept it close. It's the fourth quarter. Let's see what they can do. All right, so I haven't watched Tua's full game yet, but just having glanced at it, it looks like he actually played really well. So this is not, like... This is not a greater opinion on Tua's game against the Bears, but this is what a pedestrian throw gone wrong looks like. This is what happens when, like, that's a bad throw. If he had made it, it would be pedestrian. But that's, a, you, you see what I mean? Anyway, back to Justin Fields. Uh, what a play. Is, is this intended? No, he just took off. He didn't like that the pocket was a little weird. He had Bradley Chubb on a tight end, so he just took off for a neutral run and a plus pocket movement. Good for him. He's realizing his limitations, and he's just making the game simple for himself. All right, so there's a positive run. He broke a tackle to get the first down. Probably shouldn't have been there. Like, a normal quarterback does not gain yards here, so good on him. play action, tons of time, doesn't like his first read, and then throws a terrible pass to the flat. Not only does he almost get his running back blown to smithereens, but <laughs> it's not even accurate. Alright, you got the upfield leverage. Ah. Okay. See, this is the thing. Justin Fields has man... Okay. Again, 3, 6, 9, 10. So they're just playing man across the board with two high safeties. Right here already, his outside left side receiver, he's already broken free. He's got leverage upfield. He's gaining ground on him. The ball needs to get thrown right now. Like, it needs to already be out. Fields does a really good job of making Bradley Chubb miss a tackle. But even though he missed that read and didn't throw the ball in time to Equinemius St. Brown, his ability as a pure athlete, shedding the tackle and getting the positive run, makes up for it. And in the short term, you can get away with shit like this. 
And eventually, he's going to have to learn to throw the ball to the open receiver. But for now, that works. This is a terrible sack. You can't take this sack. Okay, you've got one man covering two receivers. So you throw this slant, or you throw whatever is behind this slant. And if you really, really don't want to do that, you've got this in route, and you got literally everything's open. Just throw the fucking ball. Right here, the ball should be out so fast to number eight. But he holds on to it, and he panics a little bit, and he takes a sack he shouldn't have. And every quarterback does that sometimes, but it's a negative play. It's bad. Can't do that. Routine throw. They're just trying to get something going because they can't establish a rhythm on offense right now. And we've seen that as the game has gone on, the gimmicks don't work as much. And the Bears are having a harder and harder time moving the ball down the field. Here, Fields stares down his first receiver. And he tries to do a back shoulder, but he misses the back shoulder pretty substantially. That's another bad throw. Like The receiver didn't make the back shoulder easier, but it was still a half yard too far behind for even a good back shoulder. So, let's see if Fields gets one more shot. The Bears D bows their necks. And Fields is going to get one more chance with decent starting field position to win this game. This is, uh, as Big Cat on Twitter said, a legacy drive. Starts off with a routine throw, and then here it is a positive run. Now it's going to be a little easier for him to run on them, the Dolphins that is, because the Dolphins would like him to run. Choose up clock, right? Bears have two minutes to drive half the field and score a touchdown or kick a field goal. They have one timeout. The Dolphins would love it if they ran the ball. Now, remember when I was telling you guys about a negative run? Here's an example. Play action, and there's a little bit of pass rush, but it actually is taken care of. Like, Melvin Ingram being this close might scare a quarterback, but there's two guys on him, and he's, he's eaten up. You've got a mass protect, so there's eight people blocking. He didn't have to escape from that pocket, right? I can't see what's downfield but I'm going to tell you for a fact, he did not have to run here. He could have stayed in here for a moment. He could have dipped back out through this alleyway. Rolling away to his right actually allows number 94 to get free of his blocker. So the reason that Fields is under so much pressure is because he rolls out. And then here, right here, he should say, okay, I can't outrun number 45. I can't turn that corner and get a large gain throw the ball out of bounds, get the ball back up to the line of scrimmage, and stop the clock immediately. Instead, he wastes three more seconds, risks getting hurt, risks getting hit, gets no, loses yardage. That's a negative run, right? It's not that he's bad at running. It's that it was a bad decision. Ugh, okay. Third and ten. That's a pickable ball. That's so underthrown. Look at how Chase Claypool has, he has a step. Like if you look right here, and I, I know, I wish I had the all 22. I do. He's got a step on him, right? Here's, this blur is a Miami blur. And this blur is a Chicago blur. <laughs> the Chicago blurs. If the ball is further downfield, Claypool will run under it. Now, the safety will come over the top, but you're hoping that Claypool can make a spectacular reception, right? Like you're hoping he can moss somebody. The ball is low and behind. If the ball is three yards further downfield, Claypool has a chance to high point the ball. I know. This is pass interference. But they don't call pass interference late in games like this, especially on underthrown jump balls. It just doesn't happen. It's like on a Hail Mary. It's massive pass interference. Claypool probably still could have caught it. Like, honestly, it hit him in the fucking palms. Claypool should catch that ball. But Fields made it harder on everybody because he didn't throw the ball high and allow Claypool to jump and catch it with his fingertips above the defenders. So that's a, that's a bad ball. Here on fourth down, that's a plus pocket movement. He rolls out. That is a dime. That is a great throw. Legit, like, that's a category of throw. Great. And that is a great throw.
Nailed him. Nailed him. It's just a bad drop by St. Brown. And I really like Equinemius St. Brown. I always have. I've always defended him and rooted for him to get more chances. He squandered one there. Time to go to the charts. So when we plug the numbers into the chart, here's what we get. Justin Fields, I gave a B performance. And this is nuanced. So if you look at this chart, you'll say, well, Justin Fields had the same amount of positive plays as he did negative plays. I mean, if it's the same, then that should be like a C, right? Because a C is neutral. A C, a C is replacement. Like, and if he did just as many good things as he did bad things, then isn't that just replacement? Typically, yes. His success rate was replace, replaceable. However, he had an elite throw on that touchdown. He had the great throw to Economia St. Brown on fourth down that should have been caught. And he had 10 positive runs, one of which was that game break breaking elite run that ended in a touchdown on like a 60 yard carry or something crazy like that so his big his positives were really high and his negatives weren't that low he only had the one interceptable ball and he got lucky because it didn't even count he didn't fumble like which is honestly kind of rare for justin fields he has a fumbling problem especially when he runs a lot that being said this is a little deceiving because while he got a beat and i will not take that away from him, how he did it is not sustainable at least not in my opinion Justin Fields relied a lot on gimmicky or run-based plays, and while he'll always be a great runner, even when he gets old, he's gonna be a pretty good runner. You can't count on running the ball as your primary mode of moving the offense, as a quarterback at least, because it's just not as efficient as passing, and if you ever come up against a good offense, you're not gonna be able to keep up. And I know Miami's got a pretty good offense, but they stalled really bad in the second half. We'll get into why I haven't graded to his game yet, so I would imagine that he just kind of faded as they ran out of great plays. But if if you play a Mahomes or a Josh Allen or any of really the top five to ten quarterbacks in the NFL, quarterback runs are never going to be enough. You got to be able to pass with them. Running's just not nearly as efficient. So this is not a sustainable way of moving the ball at a high rate and being a good, good quarterback. However, nobody said that this is Justin Fields' finished product. And I think that the hope for him, the hope that I didn't have just a few weeks ago at all, is that if they do this for a year, if they leverage this gimmick until it stops working, there's a chance that Justin Fields can develop all the rest of the pieces of his game. He can get more accurate. He can slow the game down in his mind, and he can be on time with those throws that he usually misses. There is a path to success. Now, I don't think that this is special. I don't think this game was special at all. I don't think that Justin Fields is special. I don't even think that he is a good quarterback yet. I don't even think Bears fans should be sold that they have their guy yet. But after a year and a half of Justin Fields being certainly a failure and a problem for the Bears that will set back their franchise, Justin Fields is now a project quarterback with a chance. Because that's what he is. He's a project. He needs to develop mentally. He needs to develop technically. He needs to learn how to be a true passer. And in time, that can happen. It doesn't happen often. It's more of a pipe dream. It's kind of like everybody will point to like, oh, look, Josh Allen did it with accuracy. But like, who else developed accuracy? So you could point to, I'm trying to think of a quarterback who was just an athlete that turned into more of a cerebral player. Like maybe Michael Vick at the very end, but not even really. It's tough. Typically, you either have it mentally or you don't. And like I said, it could change. Justin, Justin Fields could be the mental version of Josh Allen. Like, he could be the, he had all the tools and he just didn't understand how to do it, and then he figured it out. Just like Josh Allen was the, yeah, he was everything. You just couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. And then he figured out how to be accurate. This was a good game. You take away the running, all of a sudden, that, that 7.5 slugging grade down there, if you just take away his running altogether, positives, negatives, everything, but you keep his pocket, it turns into a negative three. So just as a passer alone, it was not a good performance at all. But if you incorporate the running, it's useful. He becomes pretty solid. And when you account for just how explosive some of those runs were, it becomes, like, low-key pretty fucking good. It's a B performance. It's one of his best performances. And I think Bears fans have something to be hopeful about.